So this is the Duke's cut. Um, that gets you onto the Oxford Canal. And I'm coming through here uh, on a rainy morning. It started raining, as you can probably see. I want to get down here and get onto the Oxford Canal uh, without going through town, so the Duke's Cut is the way to go. It takes you down an old mill stream and off the Thames and then through a tiny lock onto the Oxford Canal. Not such a nice morning today. It was raining properly earlier. Now we've just got this fine misty drizzle that you can probably see on the screen. Which is less than pleasant. But luckily, being in this boat, I can go in the rain and not get wet except when I have to get out and do the locks. Such is life. Now essentially this is the old Wolvercote mill stream until we get into the straight bit we're coming into now, which is the Duke's Cut. And as you can see, like the rest of the Oxford Canal, it's narrow and it's shallow and it is very slow going. So um, there's no point in trying to hurry on the Oxford Canal. You'll enjoy yourself much more if you just accept that it's not going to be a very quick trip and take your time and enjoy the trip, because that's what it's all about. So we're off the Wolvercote Mill Stream, and this is Duke's Cut proper, and it is really narrow, as you can see. Um, some of the boats are in terrible state, and you want to go past them literally at Tacova, so as not to cause any, any damage. I think some of them are, you know, days away from sinking by the look of them. That one we just passed, that little plastic cruiser. But anyway, it's always wise to pass boats and take over so as not to disturb the occupants. Especially since most of these boats will have people living on them. Just going under the A40 now. And here is the lock that takes you onto the Oxford Canal at the bottom of Duke's Cut. Just tie up at the lay-by here on the left. This is a very typical lock lay-by on the Oxford Canal. There's only room for one, say, 40, 50 foot narrow boat. Um, often you'll end up queuing for locks and nowhere to tie off onto while you wait. So just be prepared for that. And an unusual lock on the Duke's Cut. Um, single gates on each end and this strange paddle mechanism for uh, for filling the lock here. You don't see this one anywhere else. Nice thing about narrow locks is you can just leave the boat, it won't drift off onto the other side of the lock and you can always get back on it. So uh, it saves a lot of time tying off and tying on again every time. It looks as though the Canal and Rivers Trust uh, floating tyre logo hasn't caught up here. They probably only just put this sticker on for the new, old new logo. When you go through this bridge, it's right for Oxford Town Centre and left to go up towards uh, Napton, Kidlington and, uh, and the north. So we want to turn left, we do not want to go into Oxford Town Centre. This is a very low bridge, I've had to put the screen down to get through. A bit concerned about the edges of the screen catching on the uh, brickwork. And definitely had to put the canopy down, even though it's raining. So I'll put it back up again when we get around the corner. Oh. National Cycle Network, eh? And we come straight into our first lock. And uh, I came here last year, actually, and the uh, lock lay I was in a terrible condition then, and they've done nothing about it since. Well, before we get all misted up, this is the slow old Oxford Canal. Got through our first lock, and uh, this is what it looks like. It's narrow, shallow, very, very busy at times, slow, and there's this horrible, horrible lift bridge coming up. Well, that was exciting. Whew. Yeah, just as I came up to the bridge, it started pelting down with rain. Luckily, it was already open. I had to drop the canopy to get through. And uh, got a bit wet, but uh, not too bad, thankfully. So we'll just carry on now and find somewhere to stop until the rain's over, I think. 
Hi there. Well, the rain continues, as do I. Uh, I'm going along this bit of the canal as slowly as possible in order to uh, hopefully have the rain stop before I get to the next lock. And the rain was forecast to stop around 12. So I think I will probably make it to the next lock before the rain stops. Um, I'll just have to wait it out, I guess. Not many people mad enough to be boating in this weather. There were a few came past, but uh, it's horrible. Well, you don't often see real working traffic on the Oxford Canal these days. But these dredgers are doing a fantastic job of making sure the canal is deep enough for navigation along quite long sections of the canal this year, 2019. So thank you very much to them. And uh, working boats on the Oxford Canal, brilliant. Well, it's stopped raining for a bit. Sadly, it's impossible to get through some of these very low bridges without putting the canopy down, but it's not raining anymore. Hi there, moored up near Thrupp. And there's a lay-by behind me, which I'm going to try and go and get the van later if the rain ever lets up for long enough. Uh, it's horrible out there, not nice weather for cycling all the way back from Thrupp to Reading. So I think I'll leave it until Monday morning early and I'll cycle back, get the van, come up here and then I can move on. Um, got two days mooring here. There's only a, about a hundred foot of moorings along here, so uh, not much room, about two boats worth. But it's a nice little spot alongside the main road, but you know, you can't have everything just before you get into Thrupp. One thing we have got here, which I wasn't expecting, is a really good 4G signal. So I'm going to catch up on video editing, uploading and a bit of other work. Just been one of those days today. Didn't get very far. Moved up to some uh, free mooring where I can get the car in tomorrow morning, hopefully. And uh, it has rained pretty much all day on and off. There was about an hour or two where it didn't. So I got a load of washing done. Now I managed to squeeze a spin dryer on board here. Just a little upright spin dryer. And it has transformed my washing. Yeah, so the sink um, is about big enough to hold uh, five or six days of washing. And I had six shirts and six sets of underwear and a set of pyjamas and a few other bits and pieces in there. So... Uh, Normally, I wring it out as hard as I can and hang up to hang up to dry, and it takes about two or three days to dry some of it. Um, but I've put this little spin dryer on board, and um, when I had wrung it out as hard as I possibly could, put it in the spin dryer, and it filled half this bucket with water. Um, so if you can find somewhere on board to put a spin dryer, if you can find an upright spin dryer on eBay, they're about 50 or 60 pounds, second hand, 150 new. Um, these are nearly dry. I mean, they're nearly, nearly dry. And I only washed them this afternoon. So, amazing really. Uh, quite impressed.